And last time we talked about how we can shift force okay, by adding a moment, okay, a couple of moment okay, to the system to make them equivalent. Okay. In the example last time, only a quick correction. Uh, the D3, the way you actually went through the calculations, uh, you, you would have found that it's actually 0.21 meters and not 0.42. All right, so uh, just make a quick correction. Okay. Okay. Now consider this rigid body right here. Okay, it's sort of like a, like a wrench. Okay, it's pivoted at this point. Okay? Now I apply three forces: F1, F2, and F3 here. The position vector R1 is measured from this point O, the pivot point, to F1. Okay. Similarly, for R2 is from here to here, and R3 from here to here. Okay. Now. <coughs> Knowing what we know from last time, we can shift all these three forces to a single point. Let's say I'm going to shift all these to this pivot point. Okay? But by doing that, I need to add three couple moments okay, to make them equivalent. Okay? So something's missing here. So use the same method that introduced last time. Right? So let's say for F1, okay, so I'm going to add an F1. So chuck an F1, okay? So this F1 right here is equivalent to, it's, it's exactly this F1 right here. So what's left is these two, right? So these two are actually a couple, okay? So the couple moment okay, is actually counterclockwise, so I need to add that, okay? So these two are exactly the same as, let me use this blue color, right here, okay, because they form a counterclockwise moment, okay, so we call it M, M1, O, how about that, okay. Similarly for F2, okay, if I have to shift it here to the middle, right, so I need to add an F2, subtract an F2, right, so this F2 is this F2, so what's left is these two, Again, these two form a counterclockwise couple moment. So I'm going to call it M2 not. Okay. And then F3, same thing. I'm going to add an F3, subtract an F3. Right. So keeping this one, which is this right here, so these two form a clockwise moment. Okay. So um, I'm going to draw it, uh, I'm going to draw it here, I'm going to add it. Right, so I'll call it M3O. Okay. So, now, these two pictures are, are now equivalent. Okay. So to further reduce it, okay, we can combine all these three. Yeah, the three blue, um, you know, a couple moments into one single couple of moments. This is exactly this right here. Okay? And then for the forces, just do a vector sum to come up with a, a resultant force. That's all. Okay? So these two right here, one single force and one single moment, okay, is the final equivalent result, equivalent to this original picture, three forces. Okay? So we can simplify a force system to a force and a couple. Okay? So, <coughs> so the equation for this resultant force okay, is simply the vector sum of all the forces. So sum of all the forces in your system. Okay? So whether it's this F1 right here or F1 right here, it doesn't matter. Okay? Because we do the vector sum, okay? It doesn't matter where exactly it's applied, okay? Let's say if you do um, the um, using uh, geographic, uh, uh, the geometry method, right? Um, by doing the vector, that's one, okay? Sum, so F2, right? And then for the F3, Something like this. Okay, so do a vector sum, right? So graphical method, 
right? So the final FR will be from the original starting point to the final ending point. So this is my FR right here. Okay? So so FR is sum or vector sum of all these forces in your system. And this MR naught, okay, the resultant moment okay, is the vector sum of all these moments. Okay? So moment like this. What is this M1 naught? Well, M1 naught again comes from uh, this guy, right, and this guy. Okay, so this F1 and F1, right? So this M1 naught equals R1 cross F1. Okay. Similarly, M2 naught equals R2 cross F2. Right, M3 not equals R3 cross F3. Okay? And then, well, this is the, the vector, right? The magnitude of M1 not okay, equals, or well, you can just uh, do the calculations, okay, or, uh, from what we discussed before, this uh, couple moment equals to the magnitude of this F, F1, times the perpendicular distance between these uh, the pair of forces which is here to here so so the perpendicular distance is this right here okay so uh, if I call this say d1 right so, so the magnitude of m1 naught equals well, f1 magnitude of f1 times d1 that's it right so perpendicular distance between the pair Okay, between the uh, the couple. So these two are the final equations. Now, this final equivalent, okay, factor equations, the resultant okay, force and resultant moment, based on this original picture, okay, which has only three forces. Right, a system of forces. But what if, what if, originally, we have forces, these three forces, as well as some applied moment. Let's say I have this moment right here. Okay. This is applied. Okay, so this in addition to F1, F2, and F3 right, is applied to this system right here. So, for these forces, you go through this exact same thing, right? But for this extra applied moment, okay, you need to keep that. Right? So I'm going to keep this here. I call this M. Right? M right here. Okay. Similarly here, you need to, again, keep that down here. Okay, so if you have a, a, originally an applied moment or multiple, okay, it can be more than one too, right? So M1, M2, then you need to again keep that M2, okay? M1, M2, okay? So the final resultant equivalent moment equation, you need to take into account these originally applied moments, okay? So, just simply sum them up, that's all. Okay? So, now we have a complete okay, resultant okay, equation. Okay? When we reduce this original force couple system into a single force, FR, and one single um, moment. Okay. So in this case I'll to draw this picture. Okay. Um I will have to uh, modify this a little bit, okay, because M prime, because this M prime is really the sum of okay, this 
M naught right here. Yeah, M one naught, M two naught, and M three naught. Okay. If I were to draw just one single moment, okay, the equivalent moment, okay, then I can just erase these two. Okay. So the final resultant system is only one force F R and one single M R naught. This right here. Okay, which is the sum okay, of all the moments. Okay, where there is a couple moments, okay, M one, M two, M three naught, or the originally applied moment, M one, M two, and M three and so forth. Okay. Let's do an example real quick. Let's say I have this rigid body right here. Okay. Now this is just a little bar. Okay. Pivoted at this point. Okay. And then at here it's just resting on yeah, this point right here. Okay? So this symbol just means that it's simply just resting on it. Okay. That's all. So I have these four applied forces. Okay? Now I want to find the equivalence of these four forces apply at A, this point A, at the end of this bar. Okay? So just concern with these four applied forces, that's all. Now I'm not going to be dealing with the reaction forces just yet because right now this whole discussion, this whole, this whole chapter really, is only concerned with what's happening to the applied forces and couple uh, moments. Okay, so we're not even talking about um, equilibrium yet. Okay, this next chapter. All right. So, no, we don't have to consider the uh, the reaction forces. Right. Just focus on these four applied forces. So I want to find the equivalence of that. So using what we developed here. Okay. Now this is point A. So I want to. Reduce these four forces to one single force and one single moment at point A. So, it's quite simple. So, this is my FR applied at point A, right? And some moment, okay? MR naught. All you need to do is just find the magnitude by using these two equations. That's all, okay? So, just plug it in. So you use this first equation, so sum of all the forces, the vector equation, okay? So this is the first force, let's say 150. Um, if I define it as I, J going up, so this is 150 J positive, this is negative 600 J plus 100 J, negative 200 J. So finally, crunch number, quite simple. So it's in the end it's um negative six hundred j okay so something's not quite right here one hundred it's two fifty right this is two fifty uh let's modify it real quick all right okay so we're negative six hundred j right that's resultant force okay now what about this resultant moment well, use the same equation, except now originally we don't have any applied okay, moment. So this term disappears right away. So all you have to do is just sum up all the moment, a couple moments. Okay? So this is exactly the sum of R cross X. Okay? So sum of all the R cross X. Okay? So Go through the calculations, all right? So R1 would be like 1.6, okay? I, let's say, now this is R1 right here, okay? Cross it with, okay, 600, or negative 600 J, okay? And then, you know, plus the other two terms, okay? In the end, you find that it's 1880 K, negative. And, the unit is Newton meters. Okay, that's all. So that's how you reduce.